Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test, except today we're not gonna be testing a hunting ammo. I've got something very special for you. Today I've got Hornady Tactical Application Police. They're 110 grade and tap urban load in 308 Winchester. And here's your box for that Hornady Tactical Application Police law enforcement ammunition. Very cool old school looking box. And this is their 110 grain tap urban load. This stuff is very hard to find. I'm really glad I was able to find this stuff to put it to the test. There's not really any promo information on this stuff. There was some promo info on Hornady's website. I had to dig for it, but if you want to go find that and read it, feel free to. Basically, this stuff is meant for exactly what it says, tactical police use. It's meant to not over penetrate and to be sort of frangible to prevent collateral damage. So here's your muzzle velocity, 3,187 feet per second. We will be shooting this from a 22 inch barrel Ruger American. So we'll see how close we get to that velocity. Let's go ahead and pull this stuff out and take a look. Standard plastic ammo holder. Let's whip one out. And there it is. To the untrained eye, or even trained eye, it looks sort of like an SST bullet. I don't really know the specifics of the construction of this tap urban bullet. All I know is that it is supposed to be frangible and prevent over penetration. So let's go shoot it and see if that's what it does. And real quick, if you're watching this video anytime around when it came out, I'm having a huge sale on my website, masonleather.com. Go check it out and get yourself something. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22-inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are your velocities for that Hornady Tap Urban 110 grain load out of the 308, minimum 2988, max 3021 for an average of 3009 feet per second. It's always cool to see a 308 Winchester load going over 3000 feet per second. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Hornady Tap Urban 110 grain load out of the 308. We have basically nothing left, y'all. These bullets did exactly what they're supposed to, which is deliver a punch up front very early absolutely shrapnel and then you know not penetrate very deep at all and that's to you know minimize collateral damage that's what these are meant for law enforcement use i'm sure you know what i'm talking about but what remains of our three shots our three bullets are right there right there and right there i mean there's not much left of them penetration wise if you want to count that this one is right about and eh, it's kissing 11 11 and a half inches this one is about 13 and these two are both about we'll give them 13 and a half inches the edges are probably kissing that but there's not much left you know of those three bullets right there most of it broke up or most of them rather broke up right up here in the front of the block it looks like they go in they start to explode about the one and a quarter inch mark massive up front wound cavity trauma and then they taper off very quickly six to seven inches and then they're just penetrating through and then they stop by about one foot in which is exactly what these things are supposed to do so if there is really anything to dig out and look at i will do that I'm not sure how big these pieces are. I'll try and get them out of here and we can take a look at them here in a second. But also real quick, I wanna show you, I don't usually do this. I wanna show you my three shot group with this ammo. I usually don't do this because all I'm doing is I'm taking three shots real quick before I 
shoot at the gel box to see where the bullets are going and also get my velocity rings with my chronograph. And I'm not typically trying very hard. I have limited time out here. I've got to get through a lot of loads, but every once in a while it comes together and here is the three shot, you know, quick. I mean, I'm not sitting back there trying to be, you know, super duper marksman group with this Hornady Tap Urban Load. One, two, three shots. That is seven eighths of an inch center to center from the one on the top left to the one on the bottom right. Sub MOA right there. And also, if you've seen my video, I'm not sure if this video is going to come out before or after. Here's a five eighths inch group from Barnes 130 grain TTSX out of the same you know ruger american 308 so if nothing else hey the rifle likes the stuff all right y'all we've dug the bullets out of the blocks let's go ahead and take a look at them those 110 grain tap urban bullets out of the 308 winchester sort of a funny load this is not a hunting load but i wanted to test the stuff it's so unique weight retention we saw 53 62 and 63 grains for an average of 59 grains retained weight that's 54 percent weight retention this is supposed to be at least somewhat frangible you know penetration um restricted ammo for you know police use and stuff like that so I'm, you know, I'm happy with the with the weight retention, if, if if we can call it that. Honestly, I wish it would have retained a bit less weight and fragmented a bit more for what this stuff is meant for. Expansion, we saw 0 0.6, 0 0.63, and 0 0.67 inches for an average of 0.63 inches expanded diameter. That works out to 2.1x expansion, which I think is going to get the job done again for what the stuff is meant for. Velocity wise, the stuff was going pretty quick. Our high was 3,022 feet per second. Our low was 29.88 for an average of 3,009 feet per second versus the factory build velocity of 3,187 feet per second. And that works out to be in 178 feet per second slow versus factory spec. That's inexcusable. The stuff was loaded um, pretty dismally here. I fired a lot of ammo out of this same rifle, and this is one of the worst performing velocity-wise. I think if this stuff had been closer to its spec velocity, we would have seen a bit more fragmentation like I was talking about earlier. And our estimated velocity at impact down there at 100 yards is gonna be 2,798 feet per second. Penetration wise, we saw 11 and a half, 13 and a half, and 13 and a half inches for an average of about 13 inches of penetration. And this is meant to be, you know, a restricted penetration load for urban environments. You don't want it going through stuff. And so I think it hits the mark there. It's going to go deep enough to get the job done, but not so deep that it's going to go through stuff and have unintended consequences. I think it did exactly what it was supposed to do penetration wise. And kinetic energy wise with a 110 grain bullet going on average 3,009 feet per second, we're looking at 2,211 foot pounds at the muzzle and about 1,912 foot pounds down there at 100 yards. And a quick announcement before we get to my final thoughts, if you'd like early access to my videos weeks and even months in advance of everyone else, become a channel member. The links will be in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks y'all. All right y'all, it's time for my final thoughts on this Hornady 110 grain tap urban load out of the 308. This was fun to do. It's not a hunting load, it's a specialty law enforcement load. Glad I was able to get a hold of a box of this stuff just to see what would happen. And I think across the board, it did kind of what it was supposed to do. You know, it's intended for police sniper work, police marksman work. And I think across the board, it, 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 it would perform excellently in that role. The one caveat being I wish it was loaded a bit hotter. This stuff came out going, you know, a bit slower than box spec, but whoop de doo it's actually not par for the course. Um, a lot of my 308 Winchester loads I've tested have come a lot closer to box spec. A lot of them have met or exceeded it. And typically at the end of the video, I'll ask, you know, if you've used this ammo, uh, let me and everyone else know how it did for you. Um, and, and that stands to, that's the case still. I mean, if you've used this ammo in, in you know, in the real world, you know, let us know in the comments how it did for you. Um, if you've hunted with this stuff, I guess, let us know. And as far as my own personal use of it, you know, what would I use this stuff for? I think if, if you can get a hold of it, it, it's not the easiest stuff to get a hold of. It's kind of hard to find. I think it would be kind of a good like varmint load out of the 308. It's, it's coming out of the muzzle pretty quick. Um, you know, even though it's slower than spec, it's still going, you know, around 3000 feet per second. It's got that ballistic tip. It's going to fragment mostly, but hold together enough to punch through. I think this would be an absolutely outstanding coyote load for the 308 Winchester. 
it would do a number on them. And also, you know, a self-defense load. So if you've used this stuff, let me and everyone else know in the comments how it did for you. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment, or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.